Ever notice the different chlorine readings on your test strips? You might have seen free chlorine and total chlorine and wondered what's the difference and why does it actually matter? Hi, I'm Matt from Swim University and understanding these different types of chlorine is actually crucial for keeping your pool water properly sanitized. When they're off, it can lead to that strong chlorine smell, some eye irritation, and the water is not actually sanitary despite having chlorine in it. So here's everything that you need to know about these chlorine readings and what to do when the numbers just don't add up. There are actually three types of chlorine that you need to know about. Free chlorine, combined chlorine, and total chlorine. Free chlorine is the active chlorine that's available or free to sanitize your pool water. This is the chlorine that's actually doing the work of killing bacteria, algae, and other contaminants. It's what's created when you add new chlorine to the water. Combined chlorine is the used up chlorine that's already combined with contaminants. When free chlorine combines with things like sweat, sunscreen, or other organic matter, it forms combined chlorine, which is also known as chloramines. Now, combined chlorine can't sanitize effectively, and it's the chloramines that cause that strong chlorine smell, that pool smell, and eye irritation. So, when you smell chlorine, it's actually the used up chlorine, not that you have too much free chlorine. And then there's total chlorine. This is all of the chlorine in your water, which is the sum of your free chlorine and your combined chlorine. So, how do you know if your combined chlorine is actually high? It's not on your test strips, but the math is actually pretty simple. You take your total chlorine minus your free chlorine, and that gives you your combined chlorine. For example, if your test shows total chlorine at four parts per million and your free chlorine at one part per million, your combined chlorine is four minus one or three parts per million. Now, most test strips will show you free chlorine and total chlorine. Some liquid test kits will actually give you all three readings, but you can always calculate combined chlorine using that formula. So what should your chlorine levels be? If your free chlorine is in range and your combined chlorine levels are close to zero, it means that you have a sanitized pool with enough active chlorine in the water. Now here are the target ranges you're aiming for. With free chlorine, it should be between one and three parts per million, with three parts per million being ideal. Combined chlorine should be 0.5 parts per million or lower, which means that total chlorine should be as close to your free chlorine reading as possible. So if your total chlorine and your free chlorine readings are the same, like they're both at three parts per million, congrats. That means that you have zero combined chlorine in the water and 0.5 is pretty good too. But if your total chlorine is higher than your free chlorine by more than 0.5 parts per million, you've got too much combined chlorine in the water and it needs to be addressed as soon as possible. If you're interested, you can plug all of this into the Pool Care app and get the exact recommendations on how to get your free chlorine and total chlorine back in range. So what do you do when your total chlorine is higher than your free chlorine? Now remember, if your total chlorine is significantly higher than your free chlorine, then you've got a combined chlorine problem. And this means that your pool has too many chloramines and you need to break them apart and help reactivate your free chlorine. So step number one is to test your water. You can use test strips or a liquid test kit to get accurate readings of your free, total, and combined chlorine levels. Also, test your pH. Step number two is you wanna balance your pH. Now your pH should be between 7.4 and 7.6. Balancing this will help your chlorine work more effectively. You wanna use a pH increaser to raise it or a pH decreaser or muriatic acid to bring it down. Step number three is to shock your pool. To break down combined chlorine, you have two options for shocking the water. You have chlorine shock, or you have non-chlorine shock, which is also known as oxidizer. If your free chlorine levels are low, add chlorine shock, like calcium hypochlorite, dichlor, or even liquid chlorine. This is gonna help break apart any combined chlorine, and it's gonna raise your free chlorine levels. Now, if your free chlorine levels are already in range, or maybe they're a little high, you can add non-chlorine shock. This helps break apart the combined chlorine without adding more free chlorine. Now, if you decide to go with the chlorine shock route, the goal is to reach what's called breakpoint chlorination. This means raising your free chlorine levels enough to reach 10 times your combined chlorine levels. For example, if you have two parts per million of combined chlorine, you need to raise your free chlorine to 20 parts per million. Calcium hypochlorite or calhypo is the most powerful shock for this, and you typically need to add more than the standard dose of shock to reach this breakpoint. By the way, 
If you want all of this information in one place, all of this is covered in the Pool Care Handbook, including how to treat chronically low or high chlorine problems. You can grab your copy at swimu.com slash book or by using any of the links below. Now, step number four is to run your filter. After adding chlorine shock, run your filter system for at least eight hours, preferably overnight. This circulates the shock through your pool and you can add the shock at dusk or at night so it doesn't burn off in the sun. Step number five, you can retest and repeat if necessary. You wanna test your water the next day. Your free chlorine should be back in the normal range around three parts per million and your combined chlorine should be 0.5 parts per million or lower. If you still have high combined chlorine, you may need to shock again. Finally, here's what to do when you can't correct your chlorine levels. Sometimes you'll shock your pool and you'll still have high combined chlorine or low free chlorine. So here's what to try next. Number one, you can check your cyanuric acid levels. If your CYA is too low or it's too high, it can interfere with your chlorine's effectiveness. Check out our CYA video for more help with this. Number two, clean your filter. A dirty filter will circulate dirty water that will keep using up chlorine. Number three is to add a larger dose of chlorine shock. If you have high chlorine demand in the water, you're gonna to need to add more chlorine shock than normal to bring up your free chlorine levels. We've got a full video on this as well if you're dealing with this issue. Remember, that strong chlorine smell actually means that you have too much combined chlorine in the water. Properly chlorinated pools with balanced chemistry should have little to no odor. And if you need more help shocking your pool or understanding water chemistry, grab a copy of the Pool Care Handbook at swimu.com slash book or by using any of the links below. Thanks for watching and as always, happy swimming.